Hey! So, last week we finished our discussion about uh, the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. This week we're going to start talking about The Door Within, also a trilogy. Uh, this one is by Wayne Thomas Batson. And I was recommended it by my husband. He read them growing up. He absolutely loved them. Uh, and he still had them. And I read them. Well, I've read the first one. Still working on the series. Uh, so just some disclaimers, the last videos that I made were definitely made uh, when I was filming them to go to be seen before you read the books. Um, however, while editing them, I decided that it's probably not going to be spoiler free. So if you're cool with the spoilers, in my little summary that I try to do, um, that's still going to be here. However, if you want to avoid that, definitely read the book first. Um, they're all, you know, decent books. Definitely should read more. I think we, as people, need to probably read some more books. Um, does wonders for the soul, I think. So, definitely go give it a shot. Um, and you'll see my review of, like, kind of what I think of it and how I would rate it uh, at the end of this. So, uh, summary-wise, this is definitely an allegorical book. If you have read Narnia, then you know that that one is also an allegory of uh, Christianity. So it tells the story of, you know, Aslan or whatever in Narnia, and then it, but it is basically s subtext is Christianity. This book is the same way, so it tells the story of Aiden, who starts out, he has to move uh, to Colorado to help his grandpa, who is too old to be able to take care of himself, but doesn't want to go into a home. So they move to help take care of him. Aiden is grumbling, you know, oh, I hate my life. He finds some magical scrolls, and then he's like, hmm read that what a great story nobody believes me i believe it and then he finds the door within uh title of the book so basically he's just able to look into himself um and he goes to this different kingdom he's on this path being called um but then there's dark forces on the side of the path he falls off um uh, almost gets captured by the bad people in the book people of uh paragor paragory Whatever. I can't pronounce half the things in this book, so I just kind of like skimmed over them. So if I say them differently than you say them, sorry. He almost gets captured. Doesn't really say that they're the bad guys, but it says that they look evil, so we can assume that they're going to be the villains through the story. Um, gets saved by a dragon named Gabby, by the way, my fave. He, so he gets to Alabel, Alabel, whatever, um, and he learns that he has been called by King uh, Eliam, who is, is God, basically. When you're reading this in the text of Christianity, King Eliam is God. Um, so Aiden has been called to become the 12th knight. Aiden goes through a lot of training, uh, he's surprisingly good at it. He's always been, it describes him as a sort of, um, chubby kid, not fat, but not in shape, and he's not good at sports, he's not, you know, athletic. Uh, so when he starts to go into training, he starts to do sword fighting, he starts to do wrestling, all of the stuff, and he's surprisingly good at it, even though he is small and he is young. Uh, he makes a lot of friends with the knights, with the people in the kingdom. Um, then they go off on their mission with them. So basically, there's the war. You get a lot of backstory at the beginning of why there's a war, what happened. Uh, it's in the scrolls that Aiden finds, and then... They have to go and convince this other kingdom to follow King Eliam instead of Paragor, who is technically Satan, I guess. Okay. They nearly die on their way to Midgard uh, because they get betrayed by one of their own, decides to go and follow Paragor, um, and things happen. They all almost die. They all get away, but we only know while you're reading that two of them made it, uh, and it's Aiden and Gwen, or like main characters yes so they made it because they went down a tunnel they come out they're close to Mythgard so they go and they make it to Mythgard here we learn a little bit more about the connection between the glimpse world and the human world so every human has a glimpse they're twins but not quite because time works differently so you could have a glimpse that's you know 50 years older than you you could have your glimpse could have not been born yet time works differently but everybody has a glimpse because the worlds used to be one and then there was a schism and now they are not so yeah whole thing so when they get to Mythgard, paragor is has already sent his ambassadors there they are already there talking to the king 
Uh, they almost fight, but not quite because it's just Aiden and Gwen, and then they're like, oh, they get caught there, and then one of the knights of Paragor tries to fight them, and then they're peaceful, and the king of Midgard is like, oh, that's what I want. He's impressed by their peace. There's a whole big battle. Uh, we find out that the rest of the knights from Alabel are alive, but then there's a whole battle. A bunch of people die. Most of Midgard dies. It's really sad. Um, they kill a lot of people too, honestly. There's just a lot of death, basically, in this book. It's a gigantic battle. Um, yeah. The, yeah, so since everybody, you know, actually dies and whatever, I almost cried. I don't think I did, but I almost cried. Um, Mythgard is destroyed and Gwen has been taken captive. Aiden has to go alone on a mission to rescue her and to rescue what he can of the knights from Mythgard. Uh, so he devises a plan and if you've read the story of Gideon in the Bible, then you will recognize the story because I was reading that and I was like, hmm, that's definitely a biblical story. Basically the battle is over, Aiden tricks the knights of Paragor, uh, saves the people from Mythgard, um, they all go home, Mythgard is like, we're gonna follow King Ilium now, and then Aiden gets sent home out of all of all, he goes back to his home in Colorado, and that's pretty much the end of the book, he has to convince his dad, he has to, he has to start to convince people to believe in this. It also gives a little bit of the plot of book two, it gives you kind of a glimpse of that, <laughs> get a glimpse, because there are glimpses, that's funny. So, uh, it gives a little bit of a hint at the plot of book two because it mentions Robbie is in one of Aiden's visions. Yeah. And it was a lot of, like, random information kind of thrown in there, so definitely read the book because you'll understand. Um, so, my thoughts. It took me a long time to get through this book. Quite a while. The last series that I read took me about five days. This one took me three weeks to get through this book. Not because it's not a good book. I like the story. I like, uh, you know, kind of knights and like King Arthur kind of things. Um, I don't know. I don't know what it was. I think it was more the writing style of this one. I just wasn't really feeling it. So it took me a while. Uh, the story itself is good though. Definitely enjoyed that. Uh, so if you, like me, were in church for a very long time and have read a lot of the Bible, uh, you'll recognize some of, like, the stories, and like I said, there's a lot of, it's an allegory, so there's a lot of connection to be made, uh, so this is definitely, if you're trying to teach, um, Christianity, or trying to give an idea of Christianity to, like, kids, this would be a good book to give them, definitely, for sure. If you're not into the Christianity side of it, it's still a really great story about knights and fighting and stuff, and a boy, um, swearing allegiance to a king and finding himself in the process. So, whether you want it to be religious or not, it's a good story to read. I recommend it. I like the genre. This book, I think part of the reason it took me so long to read it is because a lot of it just kind of felt rushed. So the first, I don't know, quarter to a half of it, I read really, really quick. Like, I read it in less than a day. And then the middle part of it, I had stopped reading and I was like halfway and then I read for a few more hours and I looked and I was like I am still halfway through this book. I have not read anything. So it's like really rushed and I read it really fast and then really really slow and then the rest of it I read really really fast. So I looked at it and was like wow I've been halfway through this book for like two days now and then I was done. <laughs> so there are some slow parts but yeah just I don't know what it is about the writing style of this not my favorite but everyone's different so I guess just because I don't like it doesn't mean that you won't um like I said there's just some slow parts that I wasn't really feeling while reading it you like the story itself like I said so probably give this like a three and a half stars maybe four uh it's like right on the edge like 3.75 it's not even like a thing that I'm, I'm trying to stick to half stars but I'm making it up so, 3.75 stars, for sure. Because I really do like the story, I just can't get past the writing style, it takes me a bit to read. However, I am still reading the series, I'm about to start The Rise of the Worm Lord. Look forward to that next week, um, I'll read it, I'll let you know how I like it, and you can read it for yourself as well. Uh, like I said, definitely recommend them, and we will continue. See you next week.
Bye.